In part one of this video, I shared helpful shortcuts and tips for setting up a genogram inside Visio. In this video, I will show you how to construct shapes to represent different types of people in your genogram. I will also show you how to color code illnesses. Depending on the complexity of your family, you may want to start building the structure of the family before adding relevant assessment information under each person. However, generally speaking, it is better to finish one person before moving on to the next in order to avoid needing to move shapes around later. As you can see, if I needed to move this line, really I should redraw it because of the type of line that it is. If I had written the extra assessment information under Jesse before drawing the line, I wouldn't need to delete this line and start over. It is much easier to move around an entire genogram than it is to move one shape around. A square signifies a male, a circle signifies a female. In a relationship, the male is on the left. A transgendered individual has the shape of the gender they were born with inside the shape of the gender they identify with. To create this shape, overlay the shape of the gender the individual was born with and resize it if needed so it touches the outside shape. A bisexual individual has a dotted upside down triangle inside the shape. Use a triangle from the left hand menu. Turn it around so it's upside down. Adjust the size and formatting. A homosexual individual has an upside down triangle inside the shape as well, except that the line is solid. You can use the shape created for a bisexual individual and simply change the line type. To build the symbol for the index person, copy and paste a second shape, adjusting it to be slightly smaller, and overlay it on the index person. All shapes need a name and age. To add their name and age, simply click on the shape you created and start typing. I recommend changing the font. Use Ctrl A to select all the shapes, then adjust the font in the Font section of the Home tab. Since I like APA, I favor Times New Roman. I also find that fonts show up better in the final product if they are bolded. Use Control B to easily bold. Significant assessment information is noted below the shape. To add information above or below the shape, use the text tool from the Tools section under the Home tab. Ensure you use the dynamic grid to consistently space information. You can change the font now or change all the font later using Control A to select everything or by selecting the text you wish to change by holding the shift key as you select items. In this example, chronic illnesses are indicated along with any other significant health challenges. Color coding can also be used and is recommended as it helps with easy identification and assessment. There are several ways to color code illnesses inside Visio. The outside or the inside of the shape can be colored. This approach can become tricky when individuals have several comorbidities. You can add color to a shape under the Format Shape menu you opened earlier on the right-hand side or in the Shape Styles group under the Home tab. Alternatively, a segment of the shape can be colored. For a square, you can simply use smaller squares. You may want to drag and drop your square onto the workplace, away from any connectors so it doesn't automatically connect to something. For a square, you can use smaller squares. It may be tricky to get the layering properly, but the shape is easy enough to create. However, in a circle, it can be quite tricky to create the shape. The best way is to use a combination of lines and the freeform tool. To keep smoother outer lines, always send the smaller shapes behind the outer shape for the individual. If you have shading behind the family unit, you may need another large circle behind it. As you can see, it can be a little tricky to get the shape and the layering correct. Or you can include a color inside a small shape beside the written information below the shape. Again, I recommend using the copy and paste function in order to ensure a consistent format of the circles. To change the fill of the circles, just go into the format shape area. Perhaps the easiest way is to color the background of the text box. However, be careful that the font remains easily readable. If you use a dark color in the background, you're going to want to change the color of your font to something light, like white. If you're using this approach, make sure that all of your boxes are the same size for consistency, again using the smart grid. Whichever approach you decide to use, ensure that it's consistent. 
also be consistent in the font size and spacing of this information. When color coding the information, I like to use the associate awareness ribbons as inspiration. It is not always possible to use them. If two illnesses have similar colors, you want to be sure that they are easily distinguishable on the genogram. So you will need to choose an alternate color for one of them. When information is unknown to the family, include a question mark. When a person is deceased, it is signified with a shape that has four small lines coming partially in from the corners. To make this shape, anchor lines to the anchor points in the form of an X. For a square, the lines should be anchored to the corners of the square. For a circle, anchor the lines in the positions that would go towards the corners if it was a square. Then, place a circle over the shape and adjust the size to be smaller than the shape below. Change the color of the lines to match the shape below, or select no line. Then, make the weight of the lines that form the X the same weight as the shape. The date of the death also goes above the shape. Adjust the text boxes to be the same width as the shape below. Then you can adjust their placement and the font. You can change all the fonts at the end. I sometimes find it nice to change them as I go so that I can see what they look like. It is acceptable to use a smaller font size for information outside of the shape. In the next video, I will show you how to make connections between shapes to show simple and complex relationships. Thank you for watching.